No, no, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. How y'all doing? I'm Big Al, and welcome to the garage. If you're new to the channel, please take a moment to subscribe. And today, we are back with my 65 Chevy Corvair, and we are going to continue the installation of the electric fuel pump. Let's get to it. As you recall in my last video, we began the process by installing this Revolution Electronics fuel pump controller and bolting the fuel pump itself to the car. Today, we are going to install the fuel lines and complete the wiring and hopefully fire this thing up. Okay, so here is our pump. We're going to start by connecting the line to the inlet and outlet side. Let's see, we are going to use some 5 16 fuel line. Whoop, got to put the clamps on there first. And I'm going to go ahead and just replace this section of line that is on my fuel filter. So it'll have passed through the filter and then the pump. Definitely prefer the, you know, other type of clamps. So I'm going to have to go in with my channel locks like this. Ugh, this is going to be never as simple as it should be. And, yep, it's going to go. No, it's not. <laughs> Nope, not going. All right. Let's try the next. This is also... This one. Doesn't have a size on it, of course. Why should anything be easy? Probably you'd have done this before I put the pump in the... Of course. I'm not even going to attempt to put the clamp in place. I don't know why I'm torturing myself. Oops, you know, this is never... Nothing is ever as straightforward and simple as it should be. That got it. All right. I don't like how loose this thing... Oh, the other side is going to be an absolute bear. I had this same problem on a line that came out of the sending unit at the front of the car. I was get a gasoline shower. Ugh. Yeah, this is not gonna be it. As simple as I thought it would be. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, that's gonna be a nightmare with that stupid non functional heater hose there. It just ain't going on any further. Alright. Uh, what I should have done was just put this out in the sun, let it expand. That would have been the smart thing. Okay, this is how it wants to play. Well, that clamp is too loose. If I can slide it out, well then, why don't I just do that? Make my life a little bit easier. Get the ratchet. I'm having one of those weeks, folks, where it just the universe seems against me. Maybe I should just abort the mission until next week. But I'm stubborn about like that. Just back that nut out a little bit. Not all the way. Oh, 
just enough to loosen up. Mm. Okay, come on out of there. Mm. That got it. Don't have to worry about the starter motor terminals. I disconnected the battery. And I dropped the light. Gotta love my cheap, useless Walmart work light. Okay, well the outlet side is on. Let's get the clamp in place. Sometimes I have a habit of just forgetting to put the darn things on. Begin with. At least I didn't do something that stupid. Cut this piece of fuel line in the approximate middle. Which is way more than enough to do what I need to do. Remember, you can always take it off, but you can't really put it back on. And we're going to do the outlet side. And nope, you can hear that the brown wire is positive. So, and wow. Never had fuel line give me that much grief cutting it. Get another clamp. Channel locks, give it a pinch, put it over, and in we go. And in we go. Suppose, you know, a tight fit is probably better than a loose fit. Way better. Here it is. It's on. Let's get the clamp in place and get the fuel pump back in its bracket. Tighten that thing down. Alright, so our pump is in. We're going to run one line from the inside to the filter. And then the out end is going here to the gas line to the engine bay. So, oh, got our catch pan in place under here that I usually use for oil changes. Let's get this line run around. It's right over the starter. I really don't like that. Well, yeah. Yep. Hmm. This setup may not work. The line may not be flexible enough. Well, let's just running this ahead of the starter solenoid. Nope, there's a wire in the way. Let's bring it around here. There we go. Now it's in prime position. And of course, guess what? The clamp is on backwards. I can get that one with a Phillips head easy enough. Should probably spill more gasoline than I wanted to, but it is what it is. Wow, that's loose. Whoa! That ain't good. That might be why I'm having trouble. Well, I don't want to go wasting all that gas now, do I? This little sugar thing. Uh oh. I said for sugar. Is that cultural appropriation? Oh well. Cancel me if you must. This might have been the cause of my problems all along. It was Bazzini all along. Really need more hands than I was born with right now, unfortunately. 
what I should have done was just clamp the other end of that with a vice grip. I'm going to have to replace that line too. Oh well. Gas will just have to be wasted. It can't be helped. Okay, this is not, oh, bugger, that's not going to fly. Just the kind of week I'm having. This fuel line is way too small for the filter. Dad gummit. Okay, I'm not licked. Just to make sure this whole thing will work, I can just connect this right to the gas line. Connect it there. Um, no. No. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. I guess I'm going to have to make an O'Reilly's run. Get some half inch fuel line. Really didn't want to have to do that. <sighs> Oh, Nelly. A few moments later. Okay. So after a quick run to O'Reilly's, I have the uh, line that I need. We have the outline. I actually don't need to replace that. Hopefully I have enough of this 3 8 All right. Oh, and the clamp is facing the wall. The little pump's got to come out again. Cannot, cannot, cannot catch a break this week. All right, so. Only one end really needs to be replaced, and that is from the fuel filter to the pump. Okay, I feel a little better now. Yeah, it doesn't want to come off. Isn't that just my luck? All right. Of course, the stream of bad luck continues. Advance had nothing bigger than the 5 sixteenths. O'Reilly's did, but only high pressure, which cost $10 a foot. Yeah, not happy about that. So, I'm just going to put this piece of line on off camera. Where is it? Oh, dear lord. So you don't tell me I managed to lose it. Okay. To go back with my original orientation of the pump, unfortunately, because I only bought a foot of this stuff because it was expensive. Use this. Use these clamps. Big. So I'm gonna have to use the worm clamp. Okay. Not the end of the world. It's designed for the three eighths. Worm clamps can be a little bit. I like that I can tighten them up if the need arises. But they always manage to be oriented in the wrong way. Fortunately, I don't think we'll be able to finish the project today because that little mistake ate up a lot of time. Okay. That's good and tight. It's not coming off. This doesn't fit, I'll scream. I know I 
shouldn't scream, I should call Hakeem. Guess you have to live in South Carolina to get to appreciate the humor there. Alright, Ew. Lamp. It's the one that came with the fuel pump. I was hoping I would have a little bit left. I could cut it off. Yay, you're going in. Actually, I could cut off a little bit. Not my camera doing a memory. Dumb move. I'm going to cut just a bit of that off and replace this end. That'll be a whole lot safer, in my opinion. Because this looks all dry rotted and cracked. Where's my razor blade? Add one here. There it is. Okay. Let's see. Probably about there or do. Yeah, well, committed now. doing the job. Probably because it's dull as butter, but... Did I just cut my snow? No, but I came darn close. Okay. I got that. shock absorber that you hear clanking like that. Oh, you're going on. After all the hell you just put me through. It feels tighter than what came with it. So that's good. I like that. Feels good. Just gotta put the clamp in place. And that side's done. The inlet side. Got another one of these little. I really do prefer the uh, screw tight worm clamps over these. If I can get them apart with my fingers, how well are they really holding, you know? Of course, the gas line wants to move around. Be a general pan of dudes. Oh no, it's not going to go on. Of course, it doesn't help that there's just no room to maneuver in here. I mean, I'm going to make it fit. I mean, I'm not spending... Nope, we got it. We're good. So the gas line is able to move inside the car. So... That's where the difficulty is arising here. We're well away from those screws that I was concerned about two videos ago. Probably shorten that up a good bit, honestly. Now, that just leaves this. I cut a piece that's a tad longer, but uh, this is all kind of cracked. That's gotta go. This line, piece of fuel line's gotta go. So once again, we descend the while I'm in here rabbit hole.
Come on. Well, I guess it's a good thing that it's that tight. The fact that this line is spinning on here, it's not a good sign. That means it's probably letting air into the system. Well, I was able to spin it. Not anymore. My hand is stuck in the spring. Ay, ay, ay. Now, so that fuel line just points downward. piece of fuel line on. That just seems optimal to me. clamp ready and we should have this thing the lining part buttoned up from here on out it's all wiring that needs done Do the tie up. All right, so we have a fuel filter and the pump. And this red wire here needs to go to a switched 12 volts. That is up in the front of the car, and that is going to be a nightmare. Now, because it's got, to, I at least do have a hole that this wire for the thermistor runs through for the cylinder head temp gauge. That goes down around here. So, that's going to mean I have to take the seat out and do oy, a whole lot. Let's see what time it is getting to be. 11.30. Oh, guys, that trip to advance cost me a lot of time. Okay, this brown wire here is positive. All right, the lavender needs to connect to that. Crip connectors here. Strip a little of that off. Okay. Alright, so I'll send that lavender wire, which I explained in a previous video. It's in a loop that you cut it, and then you run one end to a non switched hot, the positive terminal on the battery, or a terminal on the starter motor. Annoyed. I am going to go with the former and not the latter. Let's just get this off camera. I'm uncoiling this whole mess and it's tangled on itself. Because why not, right? And as for the ground wire, I think my solution is going to be to just wire it to the ground wire for the fuel pump controller. 
that. All of it except the switch 12 volts. If there was a switch 12 volts in the engine bay, oh, that would be so nice. So nice. Got our lavender wire. Pulled through. Oh no, no you didn't. Don't do that. So probably cut it right there. Use the crimp connector, call that done. The uh, wire cutter. So, let's see. There we are. leave a little well, wiring you actually can put it back on but it's not advisable okay. it's not the best pair of wire strippers I own be like a real shade tree mechanic and just use my teeth. I don't think I could physically stick my hair, to be honest with you. So, fuel pump kit comes with these crimp bond connectors. You just you stick your wires in them. Okay. Use a pair of pliers and crimp them. Where'd that wire go? Got my channel locks here. I usually like to use my vice grip for this. But any old port in a storm, right? Hmm. Now I know I use the vice grip more pressure on it. Oh, for heck's sake, let's just... Knew that would happen. Got one side, not the other. Just my friggin' luck. Will it go back in? Probably not. Nope. Getting lucky. Let's get the vice grip and use the right tool this time. Ooh, that's got a nasty kink in it. Hope that won't be a problem. Knowing my luck, it probably will be. That's how you do it. Alright. Of course, it's gonna just continue to give me problems. Alright. Screw you. We're just gonna twist them together, solder it the right way, and then call it done. not catch a break this week. Cannot catch a break. Alright. Let's see. I think, folks, I'm getting to a stopping point. Things seem to be just kind of fighting me tooth and nail, so I think I am going to listen to the, take this as a sign from the universe and just come back to it another day. Okay, so I lied. The Greek genes have kicked in. It's time to quit being a baby and do what needs done. So while I wait for the soldering iron to heat up, let's take care of some other 
fiddly bits of business. Namely, more wiring and possibly installing the dummy fuel pump. Okay, so here we have a connection to the positive battery terminal. That is a, what is it? Quarter inch. It's not wanting to come. Okay. Let's hope this will work with the crimp on connector I have at my disposal. Probably won't because that's just just the way things have been going today. Okay. Back that one out slowly. All right. Come on, give me a little good luck. Oh my gosh, it's a miracle. This is going to go right up there. Measure out our wire. There we go. This is the other end of that lavender wire. Let's get that stripped. Wires should be stripped, bolts not so much. I unfortunately have a crappy pair of strippers. And I have no idea where my good ones ended up. Well, I need to organize my tool chest one day. That is a long overdue project. Perfect. Your vice grip, crimp that sucker on. Just bolt everything back down. Wish I could just play Harold Melvin the Blue Notes right now, but that's totally copyrighted and I don't want to get demonetized. Okay. Stop spinning. Mm. Well, that's about as tight as it's going to get. That's plenty tight. So, in terms of wiring, what we need to do next is the ground for the pump and the switched hot. Which, you know what, I'm, before I go full bore ahead with that, I am going to do a little research and just make sure there isn't a switched hot source here in the moat, here in the engine bay. So the less wire I have to run, the happier I am. So, whilst we're in here, just pan on around. And zoom in on that old fuel pump. Thing has to come out. We got nine sixteenths. Got to loosen up this back bolt here. Either one nine sixteenths or half inch. It is a half incher. Let's see. It's a tubing wrench, which is going to make it a lot of fun. But yeah, I don't feel like going back to the tool chest. doing this hopefully for the last time. I am trying to do this fuel pump installation in a way that it can be undone. 
either by a future owner or who knows, maybe even myself, Clark's is coming out with a uh, replacement fuel pump. Okay. Let's crack this one loose. All right, looking at it from this way. This way is clockwise. This way is counterclockwise. There we go. All right. Oh, come on. Wait a minute. I knew that would happen. Before we crack this thing, it's probably going to leak gas all over the place. And best to have a paper towel ready to sop that up. And why am I doing this with the heat source, my soldering iron? Now, well, it's pretty far away. Not much gas on that. Oh, it all drained out the other end, that's why. This comes up. This gets in the way. It continues to get in the way. And I'll keep this in the car just in case. I have an issue, I can probably limp home with it. I know it will at least do the job. Let's pour that in the catch pan. All right. I'm going to need to tighten up that inlet a bit. You, you just come over here. You're, you're bothering me. Again, this is the bypass plate from California Corvairs. Didn't want to bite on there for a minute. I'll throw a link to that in the description. And I used an old AC Delco fuel pump to make this rather impressive fake. All right. Mm. Let's back it off a turn. God, get, get, get out of here! Okay, maybe I need to back that out a bit more. Funny. There we go. Let's tighten it up. Now I can tighten the 
inlet also a bit further. And if I could just get away with leaving it out like that, that would be great because things away from the alternator fan. Using a tubing wrench on this? Yeah, probably. Well, that soldering iron's got to be hot by now. Okay, yeah, I don't think that's going to leak. Thread that in. It's further away from the alternator. I like that. Okay. Let's head back down below. Well, folks, my bad luck strikes again. I soldered this wire and unfortunately the camera was not recording when I thought it was. So that's the stopping point for today. All right, it's the next day and I'm back at it. I'm glad I waited and did a little research because there is a switched hot 12 volt source in the engine bay. So I don't have to run the wire all the way to the front. Okay, so the ground wire is currently stymied by the fact that I can't find my electrical tape anywhere. So, we're going to just shift gears a little bit. I'm going to get the, pot, the uh, red wire hooked up to the switched 12 volts, which is the ignition wire, black with a pink stripe coming out of the, or I should say going into the plug. That does feed into the coil. Let me just close that up, and then hopefully we're all good there. Now I just got to find that stinking electrical tape, do a similar procedure with the ground wire, and we're done. We can put the car back on the ground and start her up. I hope. Here we are, day three. Never did find my electrical tape, but I didn't need it. This is the ground from the pump. Managed to reach up and I just connected it to the ground to the fuel pump controller with a tap splice. Put the positive terminal back on and I have primed the carburetors uh, to hopefully give the engine the best chance of running. Let's get these sockets out of here. Make sure there are no other tools in the engine bay. And guys, I think it's moment of truth time. Let's get in, turn the key and see what happens. Well, moment of truth time, folks. I have never been so nervous starting a car. You'd think I'd double-cross the mob boss. I do have a fire extinguisher at the ready. I hear the pump. I don't like the sound of it. I don't like that sound at all. I think we have the cannolis. I don't like that sound. We're not holding idle. Come on, baby. Hold idle. I don't like that sound, though. What is that sound? That's valve noise. It's always tough to get her to idle sometimes when she's been sitting a while. But that sound, I don't like that one bit. But it goes away when I hit the gas. Use up the gas I put in the carbs. Now 
she's holding idle, I think. Let's have a look under here. Doesn't look like any leaks. so good. I don't like that valve noise it was making. The engine ran, but we have got some leakage. But I think I see where it's leaking from. Right here at the inlet. That needs tightened up, I think. So I hope that's an easy fix. It's look oh shoot, we have got gasoline dripping. That is not good, folks. Glad I caught it when I did, but the engine, it started up, and it did eventually idle. So if this is the worst thing that goes wrong, I will consider myself lucky. Um, car still has a bit of a ways to go before it earns my trust back. Um, let me get a wrench and just pretend I'm Archie Bell and do the tighten up. Mm. Mm. So upon closer inspection, I think the leak is actually coming from the line. I just think I need to put a worm clamp on there. Ah well, just need to go and get said worm clamp, put it on. I'm going to have to wait till everything cools down because I'm not giving myself third degree burns in the process. So anyway, that is it for today, everybody. Hope you'll please like, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next installment when hopefully we're out on the road driving this thing.